now we shall see what happens if two points are joined together. We have just discussed that a point determines a location. So, if we will join two of them, it will turn into a line segment. And what is a line segment then? A line segment is a shortest distance between the two points. Here, A and B are called the end points of the segment. Here are few examples of a line segment. An edge of a book, the edge of the postcard. And let me tell you an interesting thing. Have you ever wondered what will happen if we extend a line segment beyond its starting point A and end point B? Look what happens. Oh, see it's going on and on and on. When a line segment is extended beyond both end points, we get a line. We mark a line by showing the arrow sign on both the sides. OK, now let's get back to the points again. Just see what will happen if we start stretching the point in a single direction endlessly, with one end fixed at a point. What we get is called a ray. Sun rays, light from the torch and light from the candlelight are good examples of the ray. Just to revise, a ray is a portion of a point which starts at a point and goes endlessly in a direction. Now tell me, what will happen if two lines meet at a common point? You don't know? Don't tell that. I know you are all good students. Try to remember what you will call them. Okay, I should tell you the answer. We call them intersecting lines. If two lines have one common point, they are called intersecting lines. Hello friends, how are you? I am very happy today and will show you some very interesting things. Are you all ready? Great! We will start from the smallest thing. And do you know what that may be? Just guess. Is it a line, a segment, a ray? A triangle? No, no, no. It is a point. A point is a geometrical figure that has no length and has no area. A point determines a location. I know what you are thinking. You are thinking that what will happen if two lines never intersect and just go on and on, maintaining an equal distance. Listen carefully. If two lines never meet each other, even if they are extended infinitely, they are called parallel lines. The opposite edges of a scale and railway track are good examples of parallel lines. These were all straight things. Now, let us see some bent things. Yes, you are thinking in a right direction. Have you seen a road bending or an old man bending? They are called curves. Let's know them in detail. Here are a few points about the curves which you all must remember. Curves are those which are not straight. But in mathematics, a curve can be straight also. Now, let's know another type. That is, an open curve. Open curves are those which have two ending points. Have you ever wondered why the name is open curve? I will tell you. As there are two end points, so the area of the curve is open or you can enter the area. But when there are no end points, then the area gets closed. Such curves are called closed curves. No wonder if there is an open curve, similarly there is a closed curve too. Closed curves are those which have no end points. So you know that the open curves have their ending points, but Closed curves have no ending points. Now you have seen that I was unable to get inside of the closed curves. So that means there are certain parts in these figures or shapes. So, would you like to know them? Yes? Okay, I will tell you. Look carefully at the figure. In a closed figure, there are three parts. First, interior of the curve. Second, boundary of the curve. Third, exterior of the curve. You can see there are three points, A, 
B and C. If a curve does not cross itself, then it is called a simple curve. Look at my hands. They are bent and are a good example of simple curve. Let me tell you a funny thing. Even a dog's tail has a curve. And do you know what will we call a pair of sides that share a common vertex? We call them adjacent sides. Any two sides with a common endpoint are called the adjacent sides of the polygon. And are there adjacent vertices too? Yes, there are. The endpoints of the same side of a polygon are called the adjacent vertices. So, what the diagonal is? The line segment joining the two opposite vertices are called the diagonals. Can you think of a diagonal of a triangle? No? Yes, you are correct. There are no diagonals of triangle. Why? It is so because in a triangle there are no opposite vertices. Okay now, you want to know that what I mean by side? Now, we will learn about the different parts of the polygons like sides, vertices and diagonals. I hope that now you realize that you have seen a lot of closed curves and shapes like the tiles in your bathroom, the marble tiles in the floors of your room or a shop, a display board of a shop, a plain sheet of a paper and so on. Whatever you have seen has a definite shape and they come true to the definition of closed curves or figures. Just look at me. My head is circular. My palms are in a different shape. Nose is different too. So, can you name some shapes which have a certain number of sides? What did you say? Yes? Very good. Then let's name a few. Yes, you are all very much true. They are a rectangle, a triangle, a square, etc. But ever wondered what is the common name for these? These are called polygons. The polygons are closed curves which have three or more sides. I know that you all know it but just to remind you once again so that you don't forget. The line segments forming a polygon are called its sides and the meeting point of a pair of sides is called its vertex. Now just imagine a shape formed by two adjacent sides and a vertex. An angle is made up of two rays starting from a common end point. Do you know angles also have arms? Can you think of the arm of the angle? No? Okay, I will tell you the answer. The two rays forming the angle are called the arms of the angle. Now you know about the angle, isn't it? Great. But tell me, how we name an angle? It's very easy. In naming the angle, the vertex is always written as the middle letter. So, you now know which are the arms of the angle. Fine. But do you know what the vertex of the angle is? Don't shy in telling no. I am here to tell you everything about the geometrical figure. The common end point is called the vertex of the angle. So you know the side of the quadrilateral, but tell me, what are its adjacent sides? In this quadrilateral ABCD, sides AB and BC, sides AB and AD, and sides BC and CD are adjacent sides. A triangle has three sides, three angles, and three vertices. You learned about the angles of a quadrilateral. So tell me, which angles are the opposite angles in this quadrilateral? Got confused? Okay, I will tell you the answer. In this quadrilateral A, B, C, D, angles A and C and angles B and D are opposite angles. Now, come to the opposite sides of a quadrilateral. In this quadrilateral A, B, C, D, sides A, B and C, D and Sides BC and AD are opposite sides. Three-sided polygon is called triangle. But what the four-sided polygon is called? A four-sided polygon is called a quadrilateral. A quadrilateral has four sides. AB, BC, CD and DA. And it has four angles. Angle A, angle B, 
angle C and angle D. Can you see this figure? Yes. And tell me the name of this figure. Don't know. It's a triangle. The polygon formed by the three sides is called triangle. Have you seen the moon when it is not full moon night? How does it appear? It is like an arc of a circle. An arc is a portion of a circle. Here, PQR is an arc of the circle. First, take the center, which is the most vital part of it. Center is a point from where all the points on this circle are equidistant. Now I will describe about the chord of a circle. The line segment connecting two points on the circle is called the chord of the circle. Here, AB is a chord. Have seen the bangle? Yes? Very nice. Then tell me, what the shape of the bangle is called? Don't you know? It is in the shape of a circle. Let me tell you what is a circle. A circle is a simple closed curve which is not a polygon. A circle is round in shape. Have you ever run in the 400 meter race? Yes. So what is this 400 meter? This is a distance around a circle. The distance around a circle is its circumference. Let us know about the diameter of the circle. A line segment joining the two points on the circle and passing through the center is called the diameter of the circle. Here, AB is a diameter. Can you believe that circle has also some parts? Now I will describe about the different parts of a circle. These are first, center, second, radius, third, diameter, fourth, chord, fifth, arc, sixth, sector and seventh segment now come to the radius a line segment joining the center to a point on the circle is called the radius of a circle here ac is the radius i will describe sector of a circle a region in the interior of a circle enclosed by an arc on one side and a pair of radii on the other two sides is called a sector of the circle. Here, ABC is the sector of the circle. Have you seen your protractor? How does it look like? No idea? It appears like a semicircle. A semicircle is half of a circle with the endpoints of the diameter as part of the boundary.